Louisville has a reputation for preserving its historic landmarks and buildings. Unfortunately, some of these structures have been neglected to the point that the community may see them as eyesores or even dangerous. In this episode of Renovate Louisville, we will look at three entrepreneurs that have the vision to see past the rundown buildings and focus instead on their potential return on investment. These buildings, given a new life, will contribute to our city's economic success while preserving our past. Hi, I'm Bob Pisar, and join me as we explore the world built around you. Something interesting is happening on 4th and Chestnut Street downtown. Built in 1883, the historic Guthrie Coke building is lined with scaffolding and chain link fences in front of the sidewalk. For a building as old as this one, these signs can usually mark the beginning of a demolition. However, the exact opposite is occurring. Uh, you know, it's another one of those buildings I fell in love with because this uh, uh, basically was one of the few buildings I've been in in Louisville that had the commercial on the first floor, offices on the second, and residential on the third and fourth floors from its inception in the, you know, in the 1800s. The Coke building is undergoing a transformation, beginning a new chapter in its existence. The process or adaptive reuse of older buildings is happening across Jefferson County. The involvement I've had in uh, renovating historic buildings goes back to my training in architecture. Uh, I fell in love with historic buildings uh, at a time when a lot of architects were really going the other direction. We ha were blessed in the program that I was involved in to live in the city of Rome, uh, right off Piazza Navona, one of the great urban spaces in the world and we just were able to study how old buildings and new buildings could interact and the, the special urban environment that that created. The family that owned it uh, had it uh, multi-generationally for 105 years. Uh, they decided about four or five years ago to put it on the market and the first people that approached them were some people that wanted to tear it down and create a parking lot. Uh, one of the women that was involved in the ownership uh, was a, is a preservationist in Nashville, Tennessee, and she immediately said, take it off the market, I'm not going to sell it if it's going to become a parking lot. Adaptive reuse gives new life and purpose to older buildings and new uses that may never have been considered during its original construction. The Coke building is only starting its journey towards a new life. However, one need not look far for examples of successful adaptive reuse. Although getting an old building to meet the demands of the 21st century is not easy, the Blind Pig is a fine example of a challenge accepted and met. This building was always in pretty rough shape and um, it was a sixplex and quite frankly I was kind of scared to walk on the sidewalk in front of it. So it was really a dream of taking a building that was in gross disrepair and seeing what we could do with it. Looking at it today makes one believe the building was always intended to house a restaurant on the first floor with a second floor bar. Like all great tales of resurrection, the building that would become home to the blind pig looked very dead at one point. You know, in my heart, I'm a preservationist. I mean, if I buy a building, I'm going to want to bring it back to how it was originally meant to be. Things that were built 100 and 150 years ago were built incredibly. The workmanship was outstanding, the quality of materials was outstanding, and it's really fun to be able to get something that is in a really troubled state, but has good bones, and then have a vision for it and be able to work with people that will help you realize that vision. The industrial styling of the interior and exterior when combined with a venue for meals and spirits results in a quaint atmosphere that is unlike any other bar or restaurant around town. The Blind Pig has won awards. It's a wildly successful restaurant. Uh, it has helped revitalize Butchertown. 
I was named one of the top 50 bars in the world by Drinks International. It was ranked 39th by them. The bar got named the fifth best bar in the United States by Eater. And to be able to have one of the top bars in the world in Louisville, Kentucky, occupying a space that used to be a crack house is remarkable. The degree to which a building is rehabilitated can depend on many things, including the intended function, the business it will house, and how energy efficient modern technologies can make it. The green building is another example of a unique take on adaptive reuse. If you've ever lived in an older house or building, you might cringe at the notion of trying to be energy efficient. Despite its age, the green building lives up to its name. In fact, the process of adapting the old dry goods storage building to what it is today put environmental impact as a priority. A lot of people ask us why did we choose this building and one reason was just the beautiful brickwork on the exterior. You know, they 100, 110, 120 years ago, they just made buildings so beautifully. So, you know, we fell in love with East Market Street, with the galleries, with the diverse urban environment down here. Uh, we started working on a building. It took almost two years. During the rehabilitation effort, one of the goals was to drastically reduce the building's energy consumption, thus limiting the carbon footprint left behind. A green roof is the same temperature as whatever it is outside. So if it's 98 degrees, your HVAC is only having to bring it down from 98 to 76. So you can quickly see how easy it is to kind of save a lot of money. So the green roof doesn't actually generate energy, but it saves an incredible amount of energy. The 90, uh, 81 solar panels, 15 kilowatts of energy. So that is a basically enough to power, you know, 150 computers, 150 100 watt lights. So that takes uh, some of the appliances off the grid. Then we have the geothermal wells and there's 13 of those. Finding ways to facilitate the marriage of old structures with new technologies is a challenge, but at the same time a real opportunity for a developer as creating an energy efficient building is something that will only become more important in the future. So uh, to show you some things, so our recycled blue jean denim insulation right there. For the uh, elevator shaft, instead of using regular cinder blocks, we used what's called mine shaft blocks. So these take bits of fly ash and slag, which are byproducts of the coal industry, that instead of going to you know, a landfill, we actually capture and make usable. And then this is the, the ice bucket in the basement, uh, has 1,200 gallons worth of uh, these ice balls that then freeze every night and take energy off the grid. You know, a lot of people are nervous about old buildings, and honestly, it's really hard to take an existing structure. So there's always a, a challenge, but challenges are fun. Unless you're heavy manufacturing, any office type or any restaurant type or any retail type store can fit in an old building as, as well as a new building. And part of this building is extremely modern. You know, if you look at a building from back there and you see this, this wall of glass, this waterfall of glass, it's an extremely modern building. So we really tried to combine the two. So I think the tension between the, the old historic building and the modern vision is you know, a very interesting dynamic. Of course, the greenest buildings, the ones most environmentally friendly, are the ones already constructed. Like the Coke building on 4th and Chestnut, the time, energy, and funding has already been spent. Ultimately, the greenest building is one that we save. What's great about this building is this building sort of demonstrates uh, a lot of green pr principles. Uh, and, you know, when you really think back, a lot of the lessons we should be learning are historic lessons. This building, in the center of it, had a light well that allowed light and ventilation into the core. Uh, that core has uh, windows uh, that were operable. Uh, we're going to restore that. Right behind me, there's a clear story set of windows that actually are into a corridor. Uh, we will be able to open those windows. They'll be able to open a door. There'll be cross ventilation through all of these units, a very, you know, green um, uh, a factor in how you ventilate a building. And uh, to be able to have that, demonstrate that, and uh, show how these things worked historically is really a great thing. If we realize that the greenest building is one that already exists, you know, old buildings are made out of bricks and wood, which are inherently renewable, basically. Uh, new buildings are steel and plastic, you know, different um, materials go into it. Louisville has an incredible 
inventory of sort of rundown buildings that you can get for a song and they're amazing, just takes some focus and a little bit of money. However, if that isn't your concern, consider how older styles of architecture give a uniqueness of character to the area in where they stand. I think adaptive reuse is such an important uh, element to using, you know, reusing traditional old neighborhoods and making them new and, and modern. Louisville is one of the, the great towns for preservation. We have a long time history of preservation. We have some fabulous examples of preservation. We have a tremendous built environment. And Louisville is pos prime position to be able to take advantage of all these great old buildings that we could retrofit, make green, uh, rehab, and it also preserves our history and our heritage. Louisville loves preservation and you just got to understand it's more than just a building. You know, it's the history of Louisville which you can't recreate. We don't know how fortunate we are in Louisville. When I see these buildings, you know, I see our, our community sense of history and uh, uh, that's what I really enjoy about them. I think they are timeless. Those things can't be rebuilt. If we lose them, we lose them forever. We can talk about how we can duplicate that sort of a thing, but you can never get that feel back. And uh, uh, to me, it, uh, uh, it's one of the great resources that we have in this community. We've lost tons and tons of buildings. If you look at all the missing teeth in the blocks, so I think any, ch any chance at this point in our city's history to find a building that's over 100 years old that is a contributing element to the character of the neighborhood, you got to keep it and work with it. Once you tear something down that was built 100 or 150 years ago, it's gone forever. You know, and that's something that you really need to think about because it's the heritage of our city and stuff was built great in Louisville. I'm a Louisvillian and I love Louisville and this is a way that I can give back to my community and do something that I think is really positive for the community and positive for the neighborhoods. It's like, you know, if you want to make something a better place, then you need to take some action and take some responsibility and try to do it. Following the styles of architecture across the city can give anyone a sense of how Louisville and Jefferson County developed. The visual stunning history lesson erodes every time a building is lost to demolition. And granted, some demolition of older buildings is necessary. However, weeding out what is beyond saving and what must be preserved is a process anyone claiming Louisville as their home should be aware of. It was our ancestors who constructed these buildings, used them in their everyday lives, and gave them purpose. We have a glimpse at what their lives were like by simply looking at the world they were built through. Masonry, steel, and glass. Only after enough time has passed does society sometimes look back at these older schools of design with favor. But because of those quick on their feet and with enough foresight to see an investment that will certainly pay off in the future, more and more older buildings are given new purpose extending the tangible legacy our ancestors left behind. Thanks for spending some time with us. We look forward to you joining us on our next look at what Louisville's design and development community is working on.